You are listening to High Score 510. Round 3. Fight. It sound like Drake gonna make an R. Kelly song in about, four, in about dude, two I'm years. I'm telling you, he gonna be on that knee. Dude, hey, you just called it out. Hey, shout out to R. Kelly. Drake, come on our show. We wanna see if the OG got any uh, knowledge for the young G. And y'all can have a discussion on how you guys get that young. Don't do that on this show. No, there's no shout out. There's no imitation for oh, that on this they show. Should come on. Yeah, hey, y'all do that somewhere else on your own time. Let's get to our uh, next segment then. Let's just talk about the debate. Uh, who do you blame? For the aftermath of the UFC 20, 229 with Khabib and McGregor, you know, and everything that went on. I blame testosterone and adrenaline. I mean, you can't like you can't have a beef with somebody for a year. They, they, you, they, probably, you probably fight it. They, they, like, they're not playing that shit out for a year. You mean for three weeks? Oh no, man! Like Conor's been like uh, egging on Khabib for a while now, like him and his team, mm-hmm. like with either with uh, Conor, like. Uh, heckling his bus and throwing stuff at it. I mean, like, like this dude was going like that was Khabib bussy through that stuff. Yeah, like? that was at another event. Yeah, yeah. but I, it was, it, I thought it was just a bunch of fools on that bus. It was a bunch of people, but Khabib was on that bus. Yeah. And that's why he did that. It's because, so yeah, yeah. Go ahead, right. we'll, yeah, yeah. So we'll when something like that happens and you win, like you're you're not in control of yourself anymore. So I don't I don't really blame Khabib for like basically instigating the whole thing. But like at the same time, like there was gonna be a fight at that. At that UFC event, just based on just a bunch of drunk Irish people and a bunch of drunk, drunk Russian people, like you just knew, like it was just like a, a volatile situation <laughs> <laughs> to begin with. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then for to end the way it did, I know the hostility between the two camps. Like, I mean, yeah, it was just it was just bound to happen. Yeah. Um, and plus, everybody thinks they're like an elite fighter just because they train with somebody who's an elite fighter. Yeah, I blame the UFC. And. I blame the UFC. It had nothing to do with, like, uh, as far as, like, nothing to do as far as with having security or anything like that. My blame goes to UFC. They half-assed the violence. They wanted to, you created the sport that's mad violent. You allow people to hit people on the underground when they got their head turned. They got this. You could choke them out. You could break their arm in the ring. But you're not allowed to have no sticks, no shit like that. You can't put your, you can't, you can't grab the gate if someone's trying to choke you. You should be able to do all that, man. That's not shit for you. You should be able to rub their face against the grate and give them that cheese grater effect. You should be able to do all that. So my problem is, you here you are, you half ass the violent, and then you want to stop it when the violence don't end that with the with the bell. No, you either got all the way. You got to do it. It's like a, it's, you know what it is? It's just like if American football had NHL rules, hockey rules, right? Like oh let's 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 let's, let's mass this violent have it surrounded by all these crazy rules that we allow this much violence but not this much but we gonna allow it to fight a little bit but that's and then what do you expect to happen somebody gonna hop the fence and start fighting the trainer I mean you know I mean you know what it is I see, you see it at almost every pop Warner football game now now you don't it's funny you don't see the pop Warner football game you see that basketball AAU games parents fighting you don't see a pop Warner football game because it's very controlled violence. Controlled a hundred percent. Like football's like, yeah, this is controlled this shit hundred percent. Not not half acid like the UFC. That's hundred percent. Well, I think I think I blame I think in the end the UFC and Conor McGregor have the most to take from the blame of this situation happening. I think, you know, the UFC enables the showman if you want to call it showmanship. Uh, they've enabled it. They've marketed it. They profited off of right. it. And they're in. They're in this sport, which some of these dudes, which could be was saying, is like this is not a shit talking sport. Like this is about respect. This is about us. We're mixed martial artists. We're trained, you know, to be the artist uh, of combat, and we, we're above like you know petty and and insolent. You know, just like man. Yeah, honestly, shit. I yeah. know where the fuck. Oh no, let me just finish. Let me finish. And then so like you you have that going on, right? Well, like, if you're going to play that up, yeah, like you said, Aaron, you're going to get some crazy motherfuckers doing crazy shit. But if you allow dudes to be disrespectful, like, Khabib's not about that, that, that respect. You say, according to him, it seems like you say what you mean and you mean what you say. And there's a certain level of respect of how you conduct yourself and what you say. If you're going to say certain things, then 
then that's also what you mean as a person. So then that changes my intentions of how I intend to treat you. So I think that's important. Like there's a cultural exchange that can't just be this dominated UFC. Like it's okay, it's showmanship, it's marketing. We're just trying to make money. And yeah, Khabib, you did sign up. So there is that responsibility of you understanding that you're signing up to make more money because it's being hyped up this way. But at the same time, uh, I put I put it back on the UFC allowing this ability for somebody to be like disrespectful to people's you know things that are sacred to people, family. Uh, religion, you know, what I'm saying, and, and and culture or ethnicity, like those things, you shouldn't be like. I, the the issue is that sports, these combat sports, traffic in that to a degree where it's you know this person versus that person, this color person versus that color person, this culture versus that culture, this style versus, versus that style, and and they hype it up in a way that isn't isn't allowing it to to have that actual true sportsmanship at the end, and that's that's part of the issues. That's why it's so big, but it's also why you're gonna have stuff like this. But they're not tripping. UFC's not mad. They're making hella money off this. This is they're they're in the news no, cycle no. for the next week. They 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 dominated the news cycle on Twitter and and anything that's trending last night. Yeah. They're making money off this. They're gonna they're gonna take this footage and they're gonna put it into a video to hype the next rematch. If you watch the whole video after Kubi jumps in the crowd, Connor starts climbing up on the fence. And one of Connor's cornermen is climbing up the fence to try and go get him. And McGregor sees him and starts swinging at him. And then he goes after McGregor, and that's when they pull him away. And the other dude jumps in, runs over, is like, what's going on? And he's like, that motherfucker tried to hit me. So he goes over towards McGregor, and they both swing at the same time. That video I showed you, mm -hmm. where it looked like McGregor hit him yeah, first. They, they both, they both swing at the same time at each other. But that was after he came in and was like, like saw that McGregor had tried to hit his buddy who had nothing, wasn't even engaging McGregor. McGregor escalated that situation. Yeah. But then the third dude who jumped in with the red with the with the red Fila jacket on, uh, that was that was kind of cowardly. Next subject, Jimbo Fisher. So that's Jimbo Fisher, man. Jimbo, like, way to quit a job before you get fired. Number one. If you and guys don't know what happened, Jimbo <laughs> Fisher last week grabbed one of his players by the face mask and gave him a, a quick yank um, after a fight on the field. Um, we're debating, is Jimbo Fisher right or wrong, or should it be okay for him to do what he did? Did he take the proper recourse? Brandon has his take. Brandon, go ahead. You know, like, this is a college athlete. This is see people's kids. They're like... Everybody, in, somebody kid. In any situation, like, it's not okay for you to put your hand on somebody. Some and, people kids need to in, stay. In, in that kind of environment. Especially when you're like so be a mentor, or especially you're on staff for somebody to come up and just yank a kid's face like that. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, I think Jimbo Fisher should get fired for this sort of thing. Like, if you gotta set a precedent of like just zero tolerance for that sort of thing, because like the days of coaches like hitting kids or like yanking them or like embarrassing student athletes like that, those days are, are done. I know everybody wants to be Bear Bryant, I know everybody wants to be whoever you want to name, but like that is just not. That can't, that can't be acceptable at any university. I mean, I, I mean, you see, I mean, you see all the kids like or the, the basketball coach that it was like kicking, kicking the ball, like making players go get it. I mean, like it's nice that you want to be the dude in charge. You want to prove that you're tough, and you might be upset about the way things are going. But like that sort of intensity towards the towards the athletes just can't happen. Like you throw stuff, like throw, 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 your, head, throw your headset down, do some shit like that. But you don't have to necessarily attack a player directly and in front of everybody in a physical way. I had no problem with what Jimbo Fisher did. I had no problem with, well, you know what? Like I said, everybody's somebody kid. Everybody's somebody kid. You chose to play college football. That's one of the things you got to put up with. A coach yelling, screaming, spit flying out your mouth. Hey, hey that'd be like me. I, I don't have a problem with what Jimbo Fisher did. After I watched it, I didn't think, like, I thought if he had done more, I would have been like, all right, he started, he went too far. I, I think he just grabbed him, yanked him in front of him, and let go. Like, he, he didn't, like, yank him across anywhere. He just went boom, like that. Like, and I thought it was it was well within what was needed. They're fighting on the field. Not to mention, it's like being, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, going, going, working at a coal miner facility and trying to, like, let him know, like, you know what I'm saying, no smoking in the mine. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. You know what I'm saying? By... By, by, by just trying to talk to him. No, no, no. You got to say, hey, motherfucker, this shit's going to explode if you in this mind smoking. 
Okay, you gotta get their attention. You gotta <laughs> blow something up and let them know. Hey, this is what can happen. There's gas down here. There's this well, flammable well, thing. I don't even know what I'm talking about well, right now. But. I mean, we'll just kick him off the field, man. Just say, hey, man, you go to the locker room, man. We well, well right. he had to grab him. The player was fighting. The nigga was fighting. He, he was fighting. There's people whose job it is to break up those. And they weren't doing a good man, job. Yeah. Who the ref- and that's 65 year old referees? The city, college referees have the oldest referees. I don't think you noticed that. Like, do they not have a retirement? They must have the Las Vegas retirement plan. Because, <laughs> like, last week, in the college football alone, the Mississippi game, I saw the same ref get ran over three times because he couldn't get out of the way. <laughs> and he got ran over. And the other team, both teams felt bad every time it happened. And he kept getting back up, but it was like he was old as hell. I agree with Jared. Like, yeah, yeah. He just, all he did was snap and get his attention. Yeah, he let him go quick. And the other thing, Brandon, is like, bro, you act like he's like some little ass kid and somebody's son. I understand he's somebody's son. And, and you as a parent, it's different for you now. But I'm going to tell you this, Brandon. You the, play football. And the boy probably benching 600 the, pounds, dude. The boy played football. He he letting somebody so he don't that, know get on him. That's what, that, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Jimbo Fisher needs to know that situation. Because if the kid pushes him back, there should be no recourse. Like, if you were to play by those rules, like, oh, you could put, like, hit me in the head or yeah, like, but pull my face mask, then I should be able to hit on your collar, too. Yeah, but the kid will probably also not be playing next week or be off the team if he does anything like that. Exactly. Because he's that. close enough to put himself off the team by getting in a fight as it is. Like, if, if it was one thing... I understand what you're saying, though. If he was doing it out of anger because he made a, the wrong play, like, you know what I'm saying, like, the dude made the wrong play, he ran the wrong route, ball got intercepted, so he goes up to the dude, or the dude muffs a punt and they lose yeah. the ball. Like, if he goes up and does that, that's one thing, and that's overboard to me. But when you're when, when a player is engaging in a fight on the field, which is costing your team uh, 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 yards or chances, you get him the hell and, out of there. and it's cost, it could cost him a chance to continue to play because you might have to, he's either going to get suspended or you might have to kick him off the team because if it gets that bad, like... That's one of those things where that's that great line where I'm like, I don't mind him doing that, what he did. If, if the dude missed missed the route and it got intercepted and he went and did that to him, then I'd be like, you know, now you have a cause to say something. Because that's just him being angry about a mistake. Yeah, we'll see what happens, man. He's at least going to get suspended for touching the player. Right? Has he, he, got, he coached this week, didn't he? No, he's not going to get suspended. He coached. Dude, he, I don't he, think they played they, this they, week. They debated it a little bit, but I don't think anything's going to happen. No. Dude, if he's you like, let somebody. He's the highest paid employee in you, Texas. You, you let an employee of the Ohio universities of the state decide to not report. Man, somebody really wants to talk to Aaron, man. I've never given out that number. So. <laughs> somebody really wants to. <laughs> Sell you this clean video. Urban Meyer, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> we gotta get, get to these quick hitters. Quick hitters, quick hitters. Quick hitters. Quick running quick hitters. out of time, running out of time. Quick, 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 quick hitters. Bang, 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 bang. Daddy, bang, bang. Ryan Lott. Blonde, blonde hair, don't care. Blonde hair, don't care. Blonde hair, the, the dumbest motherfucker on planet Earth. So apparently, Ryan Lott uh, was going to check himself into rehab for alcohol addiction um but before uh but before he could do that he was <laughs> he was involved in a uh, car accident where he rear-ended a car in Gainesville Florida while driving this Porsche this happens after he, he was leaving the airport in the evening from coming back from well, I don't remember where he was at exactly but he was uh that morning also trying to kick in his hotel door so he had, he's been having some issues. So Ryan Lochte, uh, on his way to rehab, basically, you know, saying admitting he needs help, uh, got in a car accident, and uh, this 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 just this guy's uh, on a downward spiral. Hopefully, he can get some help. I guess in a time where the president's being a bigger idiot than you are, and you faking a car accident to not show up for a court case, um, the president's being a bigger idiot than you were, and. Rio de Janeiro, that now they also have someone running for president off the ticket of make Brazil great again. Um, <laughs> I don't know if Brazil ever was great. The movie Blame It or Real was. Ryan, Ryan Lochte, man, you ain't shit. He on my Kanye West status, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, the best part of him end up uh, running down his mom's ass crack. Shout out to Ryan Lochte, come on the show. Trying to make my faith in God waver again. Because I didn't think God could create an idiot like this. Ryan Lochte needs black Jesus. And you think black Jesus is in uh, Lithuania with uh, LaMelo Ball slapping people? Oh, so <laughs> shout out to LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball, if you guys don't know, was... Your, yeah, your boy, yeah, yeah. boy Melo was in Lithuania, like his dad's all-star team, playing another Lithuanian team. And then he decides to turn around. And uh, guy fouls him. 
They get in a little foul, a little mix up, nothing big. This is where the Ball brothers, like their daddy, are an idiot. The guy put his hand behind his head, like you know. But in Europe, in Europe, you see that in soccer all the time. In European soccer, that's like the kind of like, Grab oh, you cool, yeah. It's like you do that, like you okay. That's really like yeah. we're all good. But he doesn't know. He takes it and turns around and slaps this, slaps the guy. Starts <laughs> to scuffle. Face. Starts to scuffle. And the crazy part was he wasn't part of the scuffle after that. Oh, he, he got out of there real quick. He got out of there. He got out of there faster than his brother trying to get out of parental rights. Man, you couldn't get no soul going with Wayne. Lamelo, you cut your hair, but you're still the same coon. LeVar Ball, you and your sons, you're the reason why slavers used to split up families. The fact that they were in US, USA jerseys made me mad, though. I'm like, you represent yeah. the United States wearing this. this they famous. weren't even representing the United States. I know that, but they were they were doing it to. to they were in all USA land. jerseys. Yeah. So, no, LeVar was, Ball put that together. That was not sanctioned by any USA governed body of basketball. It, it reminds me of when we went to uh, Oregon, like a football camp. And so we were getting ready to play this big scrimmage at this mm-hmm. camp. We played all these teams, and we played the only other team wearing all red. And so they give us these old jerseys. <laughs> These old jerseys that say like Oregon on the front, and we're like, okay, well, I guess we Oregon today. Oh um, damn! <laughs> and so we played these old jerseys. They didn't have one to fit me. I had to rip mine <laughs> out, to get it off the <laughs> side, and then tape it around me <laughs> to get it off. But yeah, man, as as a professional league, y'all just need to do better than that. Um, These are close the league. We got uh, Yasiel Puig. Man, just being Yasiel Puig in, in the locker room with his shirt off, just making predictions about I'm going, being to the World nice. Series. <laughs> I'm being. going to the World Series. He's shouting out teams he didn't even, he, they're not even going to play. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to beat them, we're going to beat them, we're going to beat them. Oh, he's just calling out every <laughs> NL team. Hey, hey, uh, Yasiel Puig, man, I appreciate you for sounding like my boy Dominican Lou. Yes, how Puig keep doing it, baby. Keep they might have stole your, they might have stole your stuff, but they didn't steal your spirit. These players still don't know. Even though they're baseball players, they still don't know how to act in LA. Keep doing it. We going all the way. Dodgers World Series. I'm not we, but Dodgers going all the way. Dodgers World Series. You know, I hate when people say we, like they plan on the team. Appreciate you for having that swagger because it ain't no LA team without a little swagger, baby. You know what? I think uh, Dodgers are going to lose next series. You know what's even worse than people saying we is when they talk to me, hey, hey, did you guys win last night? You? I ain't do shit. So lock your doors, nigga. I didn't have nothing to do with it. I ain't on payroll. We, we, and you. Did you guys win? I, hey, last I checked, I had to buy this fucking Dodger t shirt I'm wearing. We got LeBron James. Bronny. And King ten, of LA. And 10 more security guards after his house was uh, targeted by some celebrity thieves. Like, they basically go around LA robbing celebrity houses. Yeah, they got caught. They got caught and they saw they had a list. And LeBron James was on the list. Yeah. Uh, uh, LeBron James having the foresight. Even though you didn't go to college, you showed your intelligence. I think it's, you know, it's fair. LeBron James has about 25 times, the amount, uh, maybe maybe 50 times the amount of money that Yasiel Puig has. So he can afford that and Daniel Caesar. Yasiel Puig got broken into once, didn't just rebought everything else and got stolen again. You went out and got 10 security guards, even though those fools got caught. Rihanna do the same thing. Oh man, Nick Saban calling out. Uh, oh, fuck that shit. That's stupid. Don't worry. Calling out his students. Calling out the right? student section, man. Yeah, man, students are showing up to the games, man. We playing U- University of Louisiana Monroe. Are you getting paid? You know why? You know why? Are you getting paid, Nick Saban? You know why he called out the student section? Because he's the highest paid Alabama employee, right? Because you know Alabama's a state school, and he got the most money. Gets the most money. Little so little he's little. like, hey man, you guys fucking up my paycheck. Little little fact that Nick Saban's contract, his kids get to go to University of Alabama for, for free. free. Nick Saban, who gives a fuck? You getting your paycheck, right? Nick Saban, shut the hell up. You're a great recruiter, not a coach. You garbage. Garbage. You need a defensive coordinator or a quality control coach? How about me? Brad, is that it for the quick hitters? Man, that's it for, that's it for the quick hitters. Let's talk about J.R. Smith going on tour with his shirt off. Uh, J.R. Smith. Maybe because maybe the weather is bad in Cleveland. It's the only time he can have a shirt on. Maybe maybe, maybe it's, this Cleveland's just bad. Maybe it's because J.R. Smith's a nigga. I said nigga twice. It's, th- it's three for Jerry. Mm-hmm. Because you said that, that's the reason I'm eating this peanut butter right now. <laughs> Trying to do your own bleep. Oh, oh real quick. Another quick hitter. Last quick hitter. 
Drake showing up at the weigh-in wearing an Irish flag and supporting McGregor openly. Aaron. Do you love uh, let me tell you, if you any sports team or personality do not have Drake, he is known for losing, and your team loses after he gets on the team. If I'm the country of Ireland, I'm worried about the British evading again. Um, shout out to Drake, man, supporting your friends wherever they may be. Hey, Drake, you gonna bring the whiny ass, uh, punk ass music that I can't stand. If I did a black version of Inception, Drake would probably show up as Maul in every gaudy dream, fucking it all up. Drake's gonna bring the girls. So your team's gonna be good. He's gonna bring the fat women. He's trying to be friends with everybody, and I just wish that you might start choosing to be friends with people that are uh, a bit, a bit over age and not under age. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's best you focus on USC and Conor McGregor, and not hang out with uh, Millie Bobby Brown. God's plan. God's I didn't know the UFC supported pedophilia. Cutty Corner shout-outs. Cutty Corner, corner. corner shout-outs. Oh, you want to hear the new the new jingle, Brandon? Oh, it's here. Oh, yeah, you got a new jingle. We're not, we're not broken people no more? Mm-mm. Oh, mm-hmm. it's better than that, nigga. Yeah. It's, 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 it's time. It's time. We're burning down. God, if you let it in, hell. So cold, I'm bleeding now, now, now. I mean, what it means. I'm gonna let you down. <laughs> Shout out to Jared and his free time. Hey man, I, I miss I missed last week. Um sorry about that. Yo, my cutty corner shout out this week goes out to people still getting into street fights. I don't know if you notice there's a lot of jujitsu gems out there right now. You have no idea who you are fighting. <laughs> Motherfuckers know about arm bars and rear naked chokes. They know about heel, heel twists. Just don't get into any street fights anymore. It's not gonna end up. It's not gonna end up good for you. So this week I've been scrolling my Instagram stories. People are out at night because I'm not out at night anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm living vicariously through people, and I see somebody taking a video of this fight's about to happen. So these two two dudes yeah, getting each other's face squared off, whatever. And so one dude obviously just thought it was going to be a fist fight. This other dude obviously is in tech and does jiu-jitsu on the weekends. So they start squaring off, and all of a sudden, dude's trying to swing a punch. The other dude grabs his arm, jumps up on his shoulder, gets him in an arm bar. Fight was over in three seconds. Dude's got a dislocated elbow. Damn. That shit was ridiculous. Where's this? Where's this? Where's this? Where's this? This is San Leandro. Wow. Dude. Dude jumped up. Crack. Dude screaming on the ground. The other dude standing over him talking shit. I, Craziest Instagram video ever. Like, whatever, whatever. I know you just been like posting videos of your food and like mm. your family and stuff like this, but this one you just need to keep playing every day on your Instagram story. I'm just shout out. <laughs> anyway, that's my critical cool shout out. Stop getting in the street fights. You don't know what people do in their free time. Like, a lot of people know about this UFC stuff. You just can't. You just can't. I mean, it used to just be about guns. Now, people who even don't have guns can still really fuck you up pretty bad. Aaron, what you got, man? Aaron, uh, cut my cutting current shout out goes out to these people that are supposedly my friends because I get invited to baby showers, to all kind of crap. I go to some of them, not all of them, but I go tired. I work three jobs, sometimes four during certain seasons. And I'm tired. I go to things. And I finally take a Friday off of the parkway, have like basically all weekend, try to do things, and can't get nobody to go to brunch. Nobody go to a brunch. That's all I ask. A brunch. Not much. Just a just two-hour brunch. Go eat on a Saturday, middle of the day. Have a good time. You know, it, it's just like breakfast. It's just like lunch. Except it comes with a slice of cantaloupe, usually. Just, you know, I can't understand why nobody do it. And then to call Jared up today, and this fool out at 12 o'clock. What? See, now, Jared, I don't oh, hold that much. I don't hold that much against him. It's hard to hold it. You know, everybody, I can't hold a lot against them. Brandon, you got a kid now in the family. Ed got a kid in the family. Jared was never my brunch person because he can't wake up, basically, except for today for some reason. No, I was late. I was an hour late. <laughs> but it's still 12, so you still made it by 12. Uh, I mentioned to you on Friday, like, hey, man, you want to go like 12, 30, and 1, let me know the brunch. Yeah. You could. We didn't make it. 
So my shout out goes out to these people who are my so-called friends. I hate to do this, but and I don't want to be petty, but I might be the person who started like writing what we actually do. And then letting you know when I get invited to some shit I really don't want to go to, that right now you are negative one behind or something. Because that's, 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 that's all I'm going to have to do. That's the way it's looking right now. I'm not getting, I'm not getting no, I, I don't ask for much. Just brunch every now and then. Just someone call me up. Aaron be sometimes in a bad place. Call him up. Make him happy. Hey man. Gotta do the sleep, man. Brown sugar kitchen. That's where we go to get some real. Oh shit! Okay. Wait, um, they, they come over where uh, Ozumo used to be, right? Or you kind of which one? They're moving over there. Yeah. Good luck. They'll be out of business real soon. Good. They good. Cause I'm tired of them people thinking they got good food. My Cody Cooter shout out goes out to Bette Midler. Um, I have. Loved your music as a child since my mama liked you for some reason. She made me watch Beaches when I was four years old. She, you know, I had to, I had to watch it. I loved you in Hocus Pocus, though. You was great in Hocus Pocus. Ben Miller gets my cutting corner shout out for being upset with the Kavanaugh decision and the, 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 the investigation, the way everything's being handled by going on Twitter and saying that women are the N words of the world. <laughs> That's not foolish. And, um, that was very foolish of her. That's that's just not possible because black people niggas. It's the reason why that word was made. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, I am not saying anything against women's suffrage uh, or, or, or what they've gone through and and the way they've been, you know, historically and, and culturally and traditionally de- demeaned or marginalized or or treated as property, but you gotta come up with a better 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 phrase than that. You know, don't 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 bring that into it and say that the N word is the world. Niggas are the niggas of the world. Is that six and seven times now? That's probably around. Right I'm breaking. I'm sorry. My apologies to all our fans out there who don't like me hear me saying the N word. I'm working on it. Aaron's been great today. Mm-hmm. Aaron, Drake. No, no. Word I association. Know, I already got it out the way. You can't see him with that Irish flag. Got it out the way. All right. All right. Anyways, um, but yeah, Ben Miller, please choose better words. And to say that Yoko Ono and John Lennon. Uh, it was a line that they used one time. I'm like, you know what? Those are two people who are also not black people who are trying, who are probably in a drug-induced state doing some interesting conversations and they had an epiphany that women are the niggas of the world. But you know what? What does that make black women? That's the even crazier thing. Y'all ain't even thought about that, right? Nope. Ain't even considered that. No. You can say whatever you want about how women are treated. Just make sure that you keep it within reason. Don't ever, don't you ever devalue what it means to be a nigga. Okay, my nigga? Thank you for listening to High Score 510. Please check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Spotify for more content. I knock the black off your ass. I knock the black off your ass. I knock the black off your ass. I knock the black off your ass.